this year? Hope everybody's doing great. Um, Saturday, uh, Veterans Day, and, and uh, just want to uh, acknowledge everybody that has and is serving uh, our country. We, uh, we and I appreciate everything that you're doing, your sacrifices that you make and, uh, and have made and uh, continue to make for your family as well. So um, big game this week, uh, really good football team uh, that uh, we have an opportunity to play. Um, you know, you look at what they're doing in all three phases of the game, they're playing extremely well. Uh, look at their uh, results throughout the course of the season. Uh, continue to play smart, physical football, both sides of the line, scr scrimmage in particular, um, and um, be a huge test for us. So uh, looking forward to seeing Ball Nation show up. They've been awesome on the road this week or, uh, this year. Uh, we certainly uh, want to see a lot of orange when we, uh, when we get there in Columbia too. So appreciate everybody making that trip. With that, open it up. Questions? Rob. You know, Jack, after you know, the stats in this weekend, you get the one rushing offense in the league and the one rushing defense in the league. Can, you, you, know, you always talk here, this is a line of scrimmage league. You know, how does, how much steps have to take place? You guys have needed. Yeah, just the, the growth, um, you know, from our program, where we started to, to where we are now. Um, it starts with personnel, uh, having good players on the line of scrimmage. Uh, we have guys that have played a lot of football on both sides of the line of scrimmage too that have continued to get better. Uh, we've had an influx of, of some young guys that are dynamic and, and change the way the game is played. Um, and then, you know, with all of that being said, you know, you talk about, you know, D linemen and, and offensive linemen, the other position groups uh, have a great effect on that too. Offensively, your tight ends, the growth of our, our running backs, the quarterback being involved in that. Um, and then defensively, you look at our linebackers and safeties, how they're, uh, they're playing, being able to tie all three uh, levels of the defense in, uh, together. Uh, I think that's been a huge part of, uh, of the growth of our program uh, since we arrived here. And, and uh, we're going to need that here as we continue through this journey this season, uh, in particular this week. Um, you know, you look at Missouri, they're uh, extremely good up front. Running backs dynamic. I think he leads the, the league in rushing. And uh, obviously, for us offensively, we've got to maintain balance. They've been really good against the run. Ryan and Brent. Sir, guys like Jabari Sloan, Mari Thomas, Sean Campbell, who did the on Saturday. How important was it for them to get that extra week of rest before the end of the season? Yeah, uh, opportunity for them um, you know, to get completely healthy here. Um, they all had an opportunity, uh, would have been available if, uh, if we felt like we needed to. Um, but just uh, elected not to play them in that game. Be big to have all those guys back and, and fresh and ready to roll. Coach, I know you're turning the page to Missouri, but what was your takeaway from your veterans and your youthful guys when you watched the tape from Saturday? Yeah, biggest thing, uh, I talked about it with uh, with our team today in the, in the team meeting. Uh, I was really proud of whoever stepped in, the way they competed, how hard they played, but also um, how well they played within our schemes and the fundamentals. Uh, it didn't matter who was in the game, they went out there and played at a really high level. And that was true defensively, special teams, and offensively. Um, you know, to finish the game that way, the way that we did, um, it's probably one of the best finishes in a game like that where you got a lot of guys in that uh, I've had in my coaching career. Vince, and then to the back with Sam. What are the specific things that you've seen in Missouri quarterback Brady Cook? Um, listen, he's smart, he's accurate with the football, and he is athletic, uh, has the ability to affect the game. Uh, with his feet, and uh, you know we got to do a great job in the pass uh, pass game. We got to affect him, uh, not let him be comfortable in the pocket. While doing that, you cannot let him escape the pocket. Uh, he'll be dynamic and make big plays with his feet and his arm uh, as he breaks contain. Um, and then he's obviously a part of their run game too, and, and uh, can hurt you there. Ricky Gibson said that in the beginning of the year, the game felt very fast to him. Now it's slowed down. Yeah, it will continue to slow down for him as he continues to, to grow as a player. Um, it's just the evolution of, of being a young player and, and understanding everything that's going on around you. Um, that's understanding what the guys around you defensively are doing, their responsibilities, but understanding formation, route concepts, understanding your fits, um, being able to go out there and play instead of having to think. Um, he's dynamic, really athletic competitive, willing to stick his face in the fan uh, in the run game too, or on perimeter screens, go tackle. Uh, love the growth that we've seen from him and a lot of those young DBs. Uh, and I thought they all did a really nice job when they got in on Saturday. Eric and Ben. 
Who's the burden to receiver that can make a lot happen for Missouri? What were the challenges of slowing him down? And then when you have an offense like that that you know, throws it really well, runs it well, you're not going to stop everything, but how's the balancing act in trying to shut down one phase of the, that game? Yeah, uh, you got to be really good in the run game because um, everything will play off of that too. Um, they create a lot of big plays with uh, chunk plays, uh, design shots down the football field. Um, he, he's a really good player, and so when he gets the ball in his hands, uh, he's difficult to bring down. They do a good job of moving him around too, um, where you got to track where he's at uh, for some of those ball in hands, and uh, you know they try to find matchups for him. So we got to do a great job against him. But he's not the only wide receiver. They got a really good core uh, group of wide receivers that uh, are dynamic. Josh, how much did you enjoy seeing uh, the entire offense kind of? Bob Nico after his first career touchdown, and I know it was his first, but what do you think that meant with how they did kind of celebrate with him? Yeah, your first one's always a big one uh, as an individual player, you know, for, for Nico, and then uh, for the guys around him too, um, to be excited for him and, and uh, what he did. Um, that's offensive linemen, skill guys, it's Joe, it's, it's everybody. Um, they see the work that he puts in, uh, the type of player that he is, and, and uh, that was a big moment for him. Adam and John. You said you were really proud of how many guys you get into the game the other day. Uh, when you had your threes and fours in there, you're still running your offense. Uh, some coaches just go all tackle, three downs, and punt it. Why do you do it the way that you do it and keep running the offense? Yeah, um, there's times where you need to slow it down. In, in that football game, um, our guys haven't had an opportunity to play the way that we play. And so I, I thought it was important to be able to evaluate them, but for them to also have the experience of playing how we play. Um, that can be you know, backup quarterbacks and, and Nico, it can be Gaston, uh, it can be your young offensive linemen. It's you know, one of their first game experiences. So uh, for us to evaluate them, for them to have the opportunity to grow, knowing that you're gonna need some of those guys here the, the next few weeks, um, just think it's really important to, to let those guys go play. Coach, um, you know, Coach Drinkwitz is having his best year since he got to Missouri. Um, as someone who's been in a similar situation over your three years here, building a program, just what is it like going up against an opponent you have a chance to make a statement against from, from their perspective? You've had those opportunities here. Um, I'm just curious if, if you've seen preparation change before those type of matchups on your side. Uh, at the end of the day, uh, they're a good football team. They play well in all three phases. They're smart, tough, and competitive. Uh, that's why they've played the way they have throughout the course of the season. Uh, you can tell that they're prepared every single week. We know they're, that we're going to get their best, and, and it's our job to make sure that we're at our best. Too. Ben West and Teresa. Josh, what did you see from Elijah Simmons on Saturday? It seemed like since he returned from injury, he was as active as he has been. Yeah, just a guy that's continued to get healthy here. You know, got banged up uh, on the back end of training camp. Uh, he's been out there, he's competed well, um, but I think he's at his best physically. And so he was dynamic uh, in the run game. Um, you look at the, uh, the short yards play, I think the ball's on the, the two yard line. Um, does a great job getting off, uh, essentially blowing up the A gap, um, making it bubble. And, you know, got James and, and Tyler on the outside that. Uh, to make the play when the ball bounces. Uh, he did a good job of being violent, disruptive uh, in the past game too, uh, chasing the quarterback. So, um, you know, probably played his best football. I think most of all, it's indicative of him being his healthiest. Josh, I said that there's a lot of different ways to, to play football on offense. You see some teams have success throwing it a lot. Some have success running it a lot. Yeah, you the can run triple that, option too. Yeah, a little bit of that stuff. Love that stuff. You should run that. Yeah. Uh, if uh, when you talk about the, the balance that y'all has, how much, if you're a defensive coordinator, if you're a team scouting against that, how much more difficult is it when a team has near 50 50 balance? Um, well, I think when you are balanced, um, it forces the defense to defend the entire field all of the time. And um, to do that, you got to be good up front. You got to have your quarterback that's a good decision maker. You got to have good skill guys. Um, you know, we're fortunate we've continued to grow. and. Are starting to play some of our best ball and, and most consistent in particular out on the, on the perimeter um, you know but every Saturday is a different challenge uh, based on structures and, and what you're seeing from the defense and their personnel and how you got to attack it. Teresa. Josh you've been in the SEC uh, this is your third season but this league has seemed to just reload on talent and send them on to the next level you know year after year after year Right now, the projections that, that, that maybe even as few as five could end up going in the first round. 
Is the portal maybe taking a, a hit with kids wanting to go play somewhere now, even if it isn't the SEC? Or is it just that sometimes there's little hiccups where you know, it just takes a second for teams to, to reload? And uh, the draft's a long ways away. I would assume at the end of this year, this league has a lot of people drafted. And I base that off of the film that I watch every single week. There's dynamic players that are going to be playing on Sundays. In this league, um, you know, I kind of view it this way. Um, you look at, you know, the 11 guys on offense, defense, and special teams, almost all those guys will end up uh, being in the NFL in, in some form or fashion. Um, you know, the older guys, you can tell they're older. The younger guys are, are younger and are, are going to grow into that. But this league's littered with, uh, with talent. Vince DeBrin. What are some traits you see in Missouri's defense? Yeah, uh, fast, aggressive, um, you know, tackle extremely well, um, play a bunch of man on the outside. They're going to make you earn it. Um, you look at them statistically, um, you know, defensively, um, playing the run extremely well. And are one of the top teams in the country to create sacks. They got really good players up front. They do it with pressure. But the first, second, third levels are, are tied in together extremely well. Coach, you've referenced the last couple of weeks about the, the guys on the perimeter, the receivers playing better. What, what's been the what's been the reason? What's fueled kind of their growth here over the over the last two or three games here? Yeah, I wish there was some you know special recipe that we put together. Just continued growth throughout the course of the season. Guys understanding their jobs, continuing to grow in it. We've had moving pieces. Um, guys have played inside, played outside. Um, at the end of the day, I feel like they're at their most comfortable that they've been in understanding our schemes, what they're seeing on the other side. Being on the same page with Joe um, comes down to, to execution. Last question, John. Coach, we have an opportunity to get guys like Gaston and Navy in the game. Just how rewarding is that for you as a coach and, and as a staff? I, I just think it's it's important for guys that you know work and compete all year long. Um, when they get an opportunity uh, that they get in the football game, it's great to see those guys play at a, at a really high level. Um, those guys are instrumental in who we are as a program, and um, you love getting an opportunity to play um, whoever, or however many guys you can, um, based on the, the score of the game. Thank you, coach. Appreciate it, guys. Let's go to Nico Slaughter and Callan Castles.